Hello everyone, I'm Maria Jose Solano and I'm a fourth year student at McGill University. My program is Joint Honors of Mathematics and Computer Science. Mainly I chose McGill because of Montreal. As an international student, I wanted to study at a place where I would feel welcome as an international student and what I had read and seen from Montreal being such a, a lively place. I, I was really interested in, in studying there and well, McGill is one of the best universities in the world and so it seemed like an appropriate choice. And so before I started university, I was convinced that I was going to major in physics. But then after taking a couple of freshman um, courses, I realized that what I liked about physics was the math behind it. And so that was when I decided to instead um, major in mathematics. But during my freshman courses, I also very much enjoyed the labs, like chemistry labs, the physics labs. And then I took a computer science course and I fell in love with coding. And the thing is that I see coding as the lab component of math. And so I feel that the combination of mathematics and CS, it's, it's great for me, and so I stuck with it. McGill math courses have a lot of assignments. Um, I would say that most classes have an assignment every week or even every two weeks, but grades heavily depend on exams. And so most of the time your homework will be between 10 and 20% of your final mark, and then you will have a midterm that will be around 30 and then the final will have the rest of the weight. Um, and so you might say like, well, I will be doing my homework all the term and then the final will be the one that counts the most. That's right, but your work during the semester, um, it is the thing that will prepare you for those exams. CS courses also have a lot of assignments. Um, they're not as frequent as math ones because if you've ever coded, you know that a computer science assignment can tell you can take you a very long time. But some classes also have quizzes and exams, but for sure the weight of assignments will be higher because of the time commitment that they usually involve. I would say that for this program and any science course at McGill, to be honest, or at least most of them, don't rely on just memorizing everything. This is definitely not the way to go. At McGill, exams don't evaluate how much you memorize a textbook. They want you to apply the concepts. And so I feel that in order to do this, practice is key. Honors math courses give you the foundational theories of a wide var variety, I struggle pronouncing that word, um, a field. And so you can take anything from calculus that you probably begin studying in high school to very abstract algebra and then start doing mathematics in like donuts shapes. And then on our CS courses don't only teach you the algor algorithms, but also why and how they work. And so they won't just give you a, a a way to solve a problem and be like, just apply this, just code this and it will work. They will tell you how and the reasoning behind the structure of these programs, which is pretty cool. I would suggest this is a great choice if in high school or CJEP you really like to understand the formulas that you're given um, in, say, your physics classes and you want to understand like why this general recipe works. Because of my grade, um, I got an entrance scholarship from McGill. My average was around the high 90s. And then I did the SAT as well. It was not required. Um, they don't ask the SAT for people that are not from the US. But I thought that it would be like a great way to complement my Colombian grades with a more standardized exam. I got 1510 over 1600. And to prepare for that, Khan Academy was all that I needed. It's free and yes, you will, you can prepare for those. Also, if you are from a place where English is not the primary language, you will need to do the TOEFL and for that there are a lot of online resources as well. I feel that because of my experience, it's key to have an open mind 
at the beginning of university and just try to take a little bit of everything. You will never know if maybe what you thought that you were going to major in is actually what you feel passionate for. And so that's what happened to me. And I feel that a lot of people start university saying like, oh, I'm going to major in this. But then and they took that decision because of things they read or because of previous family members majoring in the same thing. I feel that you really need to take a, a glance at the real thing before you make that final decision of what your program is going to be. And so just take a little bit of everything. I, I took chemistry, physics, mathematics, um, even an astrophysics course. Then I took computer science, which I never thought that I was going to major in. And then also look into who teaches the course. I feel that a professor, a good professor, can really make a, a course a good one or a bad one. So and do your research in it um, and make sure that if there's a prof that you are interested to, to, to meet or if you like their research, maybe you can take a course with them. What I really liked about Math and CS is how it is a very versatile program and so it gives you the solid, solid theory and foundations if you want to go to grad school straight after but it also gives you the practical tools if you want to go to industry and so for my personal plan I want to go to industry for a couple of years after I graduate and then I want to return to academia for grad school. And yes, mathematics and CS is it's an extremely useful <laughs> combination and it's very desirable in the market. There are a lot of CS related jobs um, going from software engineering to research. In honors, you're not expected to do an internship, I feel. Um, but McGill is very research heavy and so I feel that undergrads are expected at some point to involve in some kind of research experience and so this can be taking a research course or doing research during the summer there are a lot of resources that um, you can look into if you want to to experiment with research and also talking to profs is it's the way to go I lived in residence during the first year. This was the easiest choice coming from another country. And I feel that it was a great transition from going outside home to living by myself. And so it was also a great way to meet new people during the beginning of my of my undergrad. But it also makes you like stay in this bubble of residence and then you don't talk to other people as much. Um, so also try to meet people that are not in residence, um, talking to people in your classes, even if it's just like asking for homework help. That's always a way to just meet new people. I have a great group of friends. Uh, most of them I met during residence, but I also talk to them in my classes and we're just a bunch of nerds. Besides being a student, I've also had the opportunity to be on the other side and be a teacher through TAing and so being a teaching assistant and I recommend this it's a great way to exploit other skills and just yeah and um, besides meeting new people you also get to to help them and it's a truly enriching experience McGill is super international um, about one-third I think of the students are not Canadian Canadian and you'll meet people from all around the world and it has a super diverse and vibrant culture and you will never feel rejected or like an outsider and that being said i feel that there's like an homogeneous culture of my girl students like we all love squirrels and samosas and that makes you different but also feel part of a general community There are a lot of resources at McGill, ranging from academic support to mental health, financial health, and even professional help. You can go, you can book an appointment or a therapy appointment. Um, you can also talk to someone if you want to polish your CV before you apply for an internship. Um, academically, 
all profs and TAs have office hours. Even there, some departments even have student-run help desks where students, upper year students, help other students in primarily the first year courses, which is great. So yes, there's a lot of help. I would tell myself to get out of the library once in a while and that GPA matters way less than you think. It's more about getting involved in cool projects and extra extracurriculars that will be way more valuable in your CV. And then I would suggest to anyone to talk to your profs. Um, your profs are the best in their fields and they, they're they really nice people, don't be scared of them. Go to office hours and talk to them, show your interest in their, in their courses and or their research and you will learn so much from them. Take advantage of being in such a privileged place. And finally, don't. I know that university can feel a little bit scary and daunting sometimes, but you already made it there and that's already amazing. So believe in yourself, don't compare yourself to others and just try to find your true passion while enjoying some of the best years of your life. And so that's all that I have to say. Bye.